Well, I'm a little late to the party here on a review video for the Osmo Pocket, but I wanted to really give it some time and use it a little bit before I uh, made my video. DJI calls this the smallest three axis stabilized handheld camera they've ever designed. They claim it can turn any moment into a cinematic memory. Are they right? Let's find out. So I picked up the uh, Osmo Pocket because I kind of wanted a second camera to do some cool B-roll shots and occasionally just have a really small pocket-sized camera I can run around when I want to travel really nice and light. Like a lot of you guys out there, I watched a ton of videos comparing the Osmo Pocket to the GoPro Hero 7 Black and I kept wavering back and forth trying to decide which camera was going to be right for me. And it was a tough call. But it was so hard to make a decision after watching all those comparison videos and after getting this little guy, I kind of think I kind of figured out why. It's because they're two completely different cameras for two completely different purposes and you know, I don't think it's fair to either the GoPro or the Osmo Pocket to do a comparison video and, and try and put them head to head. They're just two completely different devices. So in this video, I'm not going to compare the Osmo Pocket to anything because quite frankly there's not really anything out there that's that's like this device. It's got a half inch sensor, shoots roughly a 26 millimeter equivalent focal length, shoots video in 4K, 24, 30, and 60 frames a second, and it'll shoot 1080 in 24, 30, 60, and even 120 frames a second. However, the 120 frames a second, not real happy with that myself, but more on that later. So I've had my Osmo Pocket for a few weeks now, and instead of comparing it to anything else out there, what I'm gonna do is share with you what I found to be some of its strengths and some of its weaknesses. So let's start out by talking about the weaknesses of this. Now I'm not gonna go over all the weaknesses that everybody's gone over over and over again on this thing before the firmware update and talk about how oh, there's a firmware update and it fixed all these problems. Let's just talk about what the problems are that still exist now. If you're watching this at this point, you've already heard about the firmware and what it fixed. So one of the biggest issues that I've had up until recently was the lackluster and inconsistent audio through the onboard mics. Right now, I think DJI has solved that problem with the release of their 3.5 millimeter audio jack that goes into the USB in the bottom. I'm currently using my Movo VXR10 uh, shotgun mic. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out now so you guys get a difference of the audio. Okay, here's the audio you get with the onboard mics on the uh, the Osmo Pocket. Not very good. They're not very good at all. Um, maybe they're good right now, but I'm telling you, I've done this. They're very inconsistent. So inconsistent at best. Let me go back to the other ones. Okay, now we're back on board with the shotgun mic. Much better audio in this, uh, with this shotgun mic and this adapter. This is probably the single best thing that DJI has released for this Osmo Pocket since I've had it, at least for me. It gives me an opportunity to potentially use this as a vlogging setup here, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. Now. All right, the next weakness that I've found with this thing is the... Uh, I mentioned it earlier when we were talking, the 1080, 120 frames a second. It's just not that good. I've found that it won't keep up with fast moving objects. Uh, the active track isn't very good. And quite honestly, the focus is always in and out in that mode. It, it's been okay. I mean, the focus is no dual, dual pixel autofocus in any of its modes, but it's, it's really pretty inconsistent in that 1080, uh, 120 frames a second mode. It's, it's been real poor. Like for example, right here, the face detection won't pick me up because I'm kind of backlit. It's trying, it keeps putting a little box around my face like it's trying to focus on my face. However, it's not tracking me like it's like it should do or it does in ideal lighting conditions. So that's one of its weaknesses. But now that I've changed to better lighting conditions, you'll see that the, the active track is very good. It's working fine. It's just I'm, when I was extremely backlit like I was before, and if you're moving around vlogging, that's going to happen sometimes. 
occasionally that can be a problem. The next problem I found is the, the low light performance. Some of that was on me. I guess when I saw that it was a, an aperture of 2.0 or f2 or whatever, that I was expecting it to perform a lot better than it does in low light. However, it is only a half inch sensor and you're not gonna get a lot of light no matter what. But the low light performance, when you crank up the ISO at all, especially indoors, it gets really grainy really fast and, and I haven't been happy with it at all, especially inside. In addition to the poor performance when I was backlit, the low light and the audio, the active tracking has not been as good as I would have liked. It, it kind of does okay if I'm face tracking like we're doing right now and moving and it's got good lighting. However, if you try and do uh, the active track on a, an object when the camera's facing the other way and that object starts moving quickly, like I've tried it with my dogs, I've tried it with um, cars and other things, it just doesn't keep up very well. You've got to be moving almost the same speed or, or nearby and if it's a stationary object, you can walk around it and keep a good active track. But as far as the active track for fast moving objects, I was a little disappointed. Maybe I was expecting more than I should have. And in my opinion, the absolute biggest weakness of all with this thing is the fact that there is no way in the box when you buy it to mount it to a tripod. Now, I'm not like all the other people that are saying, why didn't you put a quarter 20 mount in the bottom or why didn't you? I don't know engineering and how that works. Maybe there was no way to engineer it and keep it this small. I understand DJI was trying to make this truly a pocket sized camera and I'm totally fine with that. I'm glad with it. But the fact that they didn't include the little attachment to be able to hook it to a GoPro mount or, or a, a, a tripod mount of any kind in the box. I mean, it's a $10 thing that you're selling. Why would you not include that in the box? And why do you ask? I'm just thinking that's so important and, and I feel like it's the biggest weakness is because the pocket comes with the ability to do time lapses. That's one of the biggest features of the whole thing was that it does time lapses, motion time lapses and time lapses. How am I expected to do a time lapse on this thing without a way to, to stand it up or mount it? Am I supposed to hold it in my hand for 20 minutes, an hour? I mean, is that what DJI really expected? Or do they expect that I'm going to spend $350 on this thing? And then afterwards, they're going to go ahead and make me buy another accessory that was needed to make the camera work like it like it was designed to work when I bought it. I, I just think that's not fair. I would have been fine if, if they would have charged $360 or $370 for the camera and they would have included the little plastic piece to mount it that they're charging $10 for. It just makes me mad that you're making me buy something extra to make the camera do what it's designed to do right out of the box. And I just don't think that's right. Okay, rant over. Well, you're probably thinking, man, this guy just hates this camera. Actually, it's quite the opposite. I'm really impressed with the device overall. I think it's amazing. The main strength of this camera, in my opinion, is its size. Like a lot of you guys that are watching this right now, I watched a ton of videos and agonized over whether or not I was going to get this, and all of the reviewers said, man, it's just so tiny, it's so small. And I didn't really get it until I saw how small it was in person. I don't think you get a sense of how tiny this thing actually is until you put it in your hand, which is one of the reasons for me that I was really looking forward to the uh, microphone jack accessory because it's so small, your hand sometimes can cover up the microphone or you have to hold it in such a way that you really can't use the microphones effectively or you your fingers rub by them. There's one on the bottom and one on the front, and it's real easy to touch them, and, and you get a lot of uh, feedback and noise from that. Well, everybody knows DJI is a strong player when it comes to the game of gimbals. Their Ronin S is, is one of the leading gimbals out there. Their drones also are known for shooting really good smooth footage with their built-in gimbals. The gimbal on this certainly doesn't disappoint. If you practice just a little bit, before long you'll be in those smooth, buttery, floating camera shots that everybody likes when they're using a gimbal. The advantage of this mechanical stabilization over the electronic stabilization found in some other cameras is even though in low light you might introduce some grain, you're not going to lose stabilization. What I've seen from some of the other cameras that have electronic stabilization is when they get into low light, not only do they get grainy, but it totally loses its ability to stabilize and it gets kind of warpy and crazy. That's something that you won't have happen with the Osmo Pocket.
Setting up the Osmo Pocket is a breeze, and you couldn't ask for an easier setup. You don't have to be an IT professional to figure out how to get going with this thing. You just simply download the DJI MIMO app, power up your Osmo Pocket, plug it into your phone with the uh, included accessory, and the app does the rest. It'll prompt you most likely for a firmware update, and then followed by a little bit of setup uh, for the Osmo Pocket, and then you're ready to rock and roll right with that app. Well, don't let the small size of this camera or any of the shortcomings I've already mentioned fool you. This camera produces stunning videos. I'm constantly reminded of this every time I do a video, transfer it to my phone and, and share it with my friends or show it to them. And they're like, wow, how did you get such a good video? Did you do that on your phone? And then I pull out the Osmo and show them how it works. And I can't tell you how many people have told me, God, I got to get one of those things. Those are awesome. Whether your video is in 1080 or 4K, you can be certain that if you work within the limitations of a camera with a sensor this small, you're going to have amazing videos. Also, it really helps to grab yourself a set of good ND filters. I bought some from Polar Pro. I bought their base model that just came with three filters, and I'm more than happy with it. I know a lot of people consider the autofocus on this a weakness. I mentioned it earlier in some of the modes. It is a little tough for it to keep up focus with fast-moving objects, but for simply vlogging or, or doing a video like I'm doing here right now, I've really had very little issue with the autofocus. I mean, granted, it's no Canon dual pixel autofocus, but it works pretty good, and, and I get pretty good focus a lot of times. So I'd say for, you know, I'd call that a strength. This this thing with the the latest firmware, it works pretty good. I mean, I've, I've got active tracking now. I can sit here at my desk and, and talk to you guys and, and not worry about being in focus. I know the green box is around my face, and I'm, I'm more than likely in focus. Well, now that DJI has released the 3.5 millimeter microphone adapter, there's potential for this to be a serious vlogging machine. I'm working with it right now. I'm going to spend a lot of time doing a lot of vlogs with it just to, to get used to it and practice it and see what I can, uh, how far I can push it. Some of the feedback I've seen online though is some of these uh, adapters are not working. Some people are having issues with them and they're having to send them back and I hate to say it, but they're not getting the best customer service from DJI like they should. A lot of people are saying that they are having to wait three, four weeks for either a refund or a replacement unit. I guess I'm fortunate that I haven't had any issues with this one. We'll keep our fingers crossed. And finally, another strength that I think is really important that the Osmo Pocket gives you is that full control over the exposure and settings in their pro mode. You can control all aspects of your exposure, be it your frame rate, shutter speed, your uh, resolution, whether you want to shoot in 1080 or 4K, it's all available right there for you without hooking a phone to it. Additionally, it comes built in with a CineStyle flat color profile. And for those of you that don't mess with this, it probably won't matter. You can just stay in their standard profile. But if, if you like doing a little bit of color grading in post with your videos, the CineStyle profile gives you that flat profile and adds a little bit more range for you to bring up your highlights and lower your, your shadows a little bit and get that nice range. Granted, you're not going to get the same range as a full frame camera, but for the half inch, half inch sensor that comes with this camera, it's pretty decent and I'm actually really happy with the ability to color grade on this camera and I feel that it, it enhances its use a lot. Definitely a lot more than a cell phone. With the mechanical stabilization because of the gimbal, the pro mode that allows you to control all aspects of the exposure, and the CineStyle color profile that gives you some ability to do some real color grading in post, I gotta say, it's pretty possible to get some cinematic results with this camera just as it sits right here. Despite some significant weaknesses, I love that DJI created such an innovative product. They weren't afraid to go out on a limb and, and totally reinvent what we think of as a, a vlogging camera. I hope that the Osmo Pocket inspires other companies to, to do the same thing and, and build on what DJI has created here. I've already seen some third-party companies creating some pretty innovative accessories to go along with the Osmo Pocket. Polar Pro, for example, has a whole series of accessories for the Osmo Pocket. Most of them are in stock and they're competitively priced. I like their ND filters, I like their action camera mount, and many of the other accessories they have specifically for the Osmo Pocket. So overall, what do I think of the DJI Osmo Pocket? Can it replace a DSLR or mirrorless camera for vlogging? I would say no. However, if you currently vlog exclusively on your cell phone, 
I would say it's a pretty significant upgrade. Not only because of the stabilization, but also because the, the quality of the image and the control you have over the image that comes out of the camera, I think it, it beats most cell phones, or it's at least as good. And if you wanted to add a gimbal to your cell phone, it just gets so big and cumbersome with balancing. I think the Osmo Pocket kind of is the best of both worlds. It gives you that good quality image and stabilization in a, in a compact device that fits in your pocket, literally. So I would classify the Osmo Pocket more as a, a cell phone accessory or cell phone upgrade. Not an action camera to be compared with a GoPro like everyone's been doing. Why is it more of a cell phone accessory than, than an action cam? Well, clearly DJI sees it as a cinematic tool to be used in conjunction with a cell phone. I mean, after all, you have to have a cell phone to even activate the Osmo Pocket. And to get a lot of additional features, it helps to have your cell phone uh, connected to it sometimes. If you're trying to compare this to a GoPro, that's just a completely different animal. The GoPro is an action camera that's built on durability and a great quality image out of, out of those cameras. The Hero 7 Black stabilization is incredible. But I don't really think the Osmo Pocket and the GoPro are the same thing. Can you vlog with it? Absolutely you can. You just have to overcome a few of the shortcomings that I mentioned earlier. I also think it can be useful as a, a second or B-roll backup camera for more of a minimalist vlogger, kind of like what I try and do. I try and stay as light and fast as possible. That's why I use the M50. At times, I'd like to be able to get stabilized shots, but I don't want to carry around a gimbal with me. I, brought, I bought the DJI Osmo Pocket specifically to do some of those B-roll shots, and it definitely fits the bill if that's what you're looking to do with it. So at a price of around $350, I think the Osmo Pocket's a really good value, as long as you keep your expectations realistic. Don't buy a $350 camera and expect to get the same results as a full-frame DSLR or even one of the APS-C censored cameras like the M50 or the new Sony A6400 that, that can run anywhere from $500 to $1,500 depending on the kit that you get with it. I think if you keep your expectations realistic, you'll be very happy with what you get out of the Osmo Pocket. Who do I think it's not for? I think the Osmo Pocket is not for somebody looking to have an action camera if they're looking to take this uh, while they go skiing or, or mountain climbing or, or doing any sort of action sports that a GoPro would fit. I think the GoPro, based on its durability, would be the better choice in that instance. So do you have an Osmo Pocket? If you do, tell me how you've used it and what kind of videos you've made with it. Have you found some of the same strengths and weaknesses that I've mentioned here in this video? Or have you found some different ones that you can share with everyone down below in the comments? Well, that's the end of this video, but not the end of my travels. As always, Thank you for watching, and if you liked what you saw in this video today, please consider subscribing to my channel and checking out some of my other content. We'll see you next time. Thanks.